Yeah, so welcome to this video. Please like and subscribe to this channel so we can do more of these uh, uh, videos here. What we're doing here, we're doing a full commentary over an actual driving test. This is the dash cam footage. We're going to play it through the whole 30 minutes, about 30 minutes of the driving test here. Um, it's a little bit shorter because the manoeuvre was at the end. We can't film in the test centre, so that will be cut off at the end. But this is the whole test as we go along, so please like and subscribe, and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. I did actually go out on this test, so I know what the result is. Um, so out of here, this is Ryan Way, nicely just moving down. Bit of a sharp corner here, just bears around to the right. If it's so sharp, it's industrial, you could expect a lorry to come out. If it's got a trail, it's got to swing out a little bit there. So nice and cautious at the beginning. We're on Satnav at the moment, and the Satnav is going to tell us to take the second exit, follow the road ahead at this roundabout. So following the road ahead, be on the left-hand side, make sure you keep the shape around the roundabouts. Looking ahead, you can see if there's any vehicles potentially coming around. You saw that van beforehand. If you leave it late, that vegetation, you can leave it hard for yourself. So look ahead, look early, get your observations. Nicely in nice shape around this roundabout. Great start. And be careful, potential hazards here. You've got the pedestrian crossing. You've got the McDonald's on the left. Uh, keeping up for anything that could develop from here. This roundabout awkward. Third exit, follow the road ahead. So if you're here left or follow the road ahead, take the left hand side, take the near side and go around the roundabout, it's the safer option. Tricky little roundabout here because it's quite a constricted view with the Tesco's and from Tesco's side you can just go straight into town so cars tend to go a little bit fast, be cautious, get your foot down, get away from that junction, sweeping it around, staying over, over on the near side, one, two, here comes your third exit, watch out for this pedestrian crossing, people approaching it could change quite quickly. So nicely out of the test centre, first couple of minutes under the belt, your nerves start to settle, hopefully. Up to the roundabout, second exit, follow the road. We're going up to the A14 on the right here, looking across. Well, there's the Odeon Cinema down there. It's quite restricted as well. Slow until you can go, following it round near side, keeping an eye on vehicles on the left that might be approaching. That could be a developing issue. Rolling it up, and the sat-nav is telling us to take the second exit left, uh, to Huntington, second exit, so left hand side, no signal on the approach because you're taking the second exit. Look across here, you can see what's going on down there. Looking across to the right, you might be able to time your judgment in, you might want to speed up, slow down, depending on what's there. But use your observation is nice and early as the student was doing. This is a great drive so far, it really is. Rolling it round, driving it felt nice, nice bit of confidence. Mirror checks there, make sure you check your mirrors before any changes of speed. It is a change of speed, make sure you know what's behind you. Coming down here, looks a little bit congested, quite heavy traffic, right signal on, looking for an opportunity. At a speed so we could stop at the end of the slip road. There's your chance, blue cars come through. He's nudged up a bit closely because there's a lorry behind, it's a lot safer to get onto the carriageway and be maybe slightly less than two seconds. This is good. All backing up, we put the gap in as well, a little bit of brakes there. The exam there will say in this situation, we're not going that far. So it's his coded way to say, don't bother going out overtaking. Because look, already the next junction is only what, a third of a mile away. So that all it was for your uh, dual carriageway, three quarters of a mile. Not much of a test really, just on and off in this situation. We're following the signs to Bedford. We are on sat nav, but a little bit of extra information was follow the signs to Bedford, third exit at the roundabout on the slip road. So that was the lorry that we moved in front of to get there, just overtaking us. On we go, and we're looking for Bedford. Third exit right, and we were told that the roundabout following it will be taking the first exit left. So you know at the second roundabout, we will be in the left-hand lane. Looking ahead, Bedford's on the right, you'd think come across to the right, but look at the sign there, Bedford is in both lanes. So to get to the left side for the second roundabout, you were in the left lane. That's a great choice there. You wouldn't be faulted for going in the right, but you're making it easier for yourself for being in the lane. You don't have to do another crossing over. Gone through the amber light there, but because he checked his mirrors, there was a vehicle behind. It was safer to carry on over. Rule 175 of the highway code. If it goes amber, stop. Unless stopping abruptly would cause a collision or you've already passed the light. It was the safest option. It had less risk. Great thing to do. Bedford A6, falling around. Look at that shape, nicely in there, it's very easy to cut the corner. 
So in the left lane, so we come up to the second roundabout where we're turning left, and we've just rolled into lane. A lot easier from the left hand side. Thinking ahead, planning ahead. Nothing to the right so far. Opens up now on the exit there. It's clear to go. Sweeps round, off we go. Now, this is where it all goes a little bit weird. Uh, the instruction was second exit, follow the road. There's only two exits. The examiner said second exit, follow the road. He didn't say the word right. If you hear left or follow the road, be on the near side. Now, what he does here is find the student. He's come across to the right unnecessarily. Now, you've got cars going down. It's a fast road, but it's only 40 miles an hour. You've got cars catching up on the inside. It's made it difficult for himself. Now, he realised what he's done. You can see two funnel in, but you've got to give way to cars on the left-hand side because you're merging into the left lane. Got himself a little bit spooked there. He thinks that's a bit of a mistake. It wasn't. It just wasn't the best option. You can't get faulted down for... Safe option is a safe option, but there's always a best option. Didn't quite take the best option there. Now here, we're going to go second exit right into Burton Latimer. And this is where we're going to get the serious fault. It sounds dramatic, a serious fault. Let's see what it is. This is what we're in this driving test. Good observation here. Lorry's pulled out, slowing up all the way there. Maybe that unsettled it as well. Second exit right. Nothing there. Pulling out. Moving across. Goes a little bit wide here. And then cuts back. Bump. Bump, and just mounted the roundabout on the right hand side by about a foot or so. Up on one, up on the second wheel, back down again. End of test. That's a serious fault, unfortunately. Momentary lapse of concentration. So you'll see from this driving test that was probably about half a percent of the time, if that. So he drove brilliantly for 99% of the time, 99.5%. Not good enough, that one little incident there. Fate is sealed at this point. Anyway, we're coming back, but show some composure. Uh, you still got a test to do. Into this village here, nice and steady. Quite a lot of potential hazards to go. Uh, lots of junctions, residential, could be people as well. Cars and cluster, make a decision. Can you get two cars through, or are you going to hold back for one car if a car comes? Well, they're off the road slightly. If it's a car like this one here, there's plenty of room for two. It's just sorting it out on the speed there. Very nicely done. Now, I'm more impressed that the student's got the composure back after they've unsettled themselves. Sometimes it can be like a tension build. Tension builds, tension builds. It just happens to snap at a certain point. This is all thing what happened here. And now, um, they kind of know the situation. They've relaxed and the normal driving is coming out. And this is the normal driving the student would do with me all the way up to test and on the day. The nerves, I think, here just got the worst of someone. Just held back for that car because you couldn't get two cars through here. Now, on your test, you're going to be pulling in and moving off probably about four times, maybe five times. Um, it's a nice wide road here. The examiner says pull up on the left-hand side where it's safe to do so, behind the vehicle, and that's not where it's safe to do so, pull up on the left-hand side in front of this car, before this car. Don't worry about the drop curbs. He just wants to see you moving out from around a vehicle here. So this is the first of the moving ins. No, it's six in the morning before my lessons. I'm having my coffee as well, killing two birds with one stone. Nicely moving off there, making sure you check that blind spot when you're moving off. Keeping it steady, lots of potential hazards, bit of a raised line of sight wasn't so great around there with the curves. What's road? The road's going around to the left. Nice speed here, so if anything develops, we're always on top of it. See how quickly cars come around the corner there. Now this is Burton Latimer, we're making our way through to the high street, we're either going to go turn left at the media roundabout or right at the media roundabout, we're going to be turning right. As a point of interest though, look out for the changes of speed at the end or the beginning of every road, establish that speed limit. If you're going left here, look, there's some 20 mile an hour speed signs there, sort out that speed, we're going right. Giving way to the right. The car on the left's come through quite quickly, but we've moved. They've stopped for us. That's fine. That showed confidence there. And we're taking the next left. 
this is one of these typical sort of 1930s basically cars before uh, houses before the car was invented or built um, cars on both sides of the street we've just got to work our way through now it's held back here Now there's another car coming. This dash cam's in the middle, the examiner's on the left. He can't see that. So the student's saying, I'm just holding back here. I've got a vehicle that's coming out, that's coming down here. Talk to it. If that car only pulled in, the examiner thought it just sat there for no good reason if they can't see the vehicle. Talk to your examiner. Tell them what you're thinking. Tell them what your thought processes were. They do a driving test called, they used to be called the Cardington test, the same test as we take as driving examiners. It's an advanced driving test and we're expected to talk a talk for our thought process. If you can do that, you're showing your driving to a very high standard. So just meandering through here, good speed. What could go wrong here? Well, someone could walk out, a car could move out, a car door could open. So we're driving at speed. If any one of those three reasonably foreseeable things could happen, you're gonna be prepared for it. Could physically go faster. That's not the right speed though, even if it was in the speed limit. So going around to the right, quite restricted. So coming over to the left to open up the line of sight. Really great positioning here. And there we go, road's nice and clear. And end of the road, we're going to be turning left. Now this looks quite restricted. It's really tight, very hard to see. Cars are parked up. How are you going to get observations? Well, you have to nudge out, peep and creep, or and Look at reflections, maybe the reflections in those windows of the houses opposite, maybe in the cars there you can, if you can't see directly, you might be able to see indirectly as the student did. That was a very nice moving off. So a big wide road, we got to see about four pulling ins and moving offs, pulling over left hand side where it's safe to do so this time. So we're looking for a raised curb. That's yeah, good, it's not inconvenience anyone. Don't pull up over someone's driveway, it's quite easily done. You're gonna pick up a, a fault for that if you do. And moving off again, make sure we're checking that blind spot when we're moving off, as we're moving off. The junction there, car's just pulled out. We just saw that, that car's coming quite quickly. That car shouldn't have come out, but they have. This is what, <laughs> this is what cars do to you. But we have to react to it. Great driving there, saw it, checked the speed. They're just moving off to the right. Coming at the speed. Don't assume that car was going to go. We're slowing until that car went. That was a nice little exercise in driving there. And it's such a shame that that silly little momentary lapse of concentration, completely out of character, is not going to work out today. It's a cruel test, it is, it can be really cruel. Good drivers can not work out, well, it doesn't work out for you on the day, it doesn't work out. Just holding back, making sure that vehicle stopped for us. Yes, we have, we got priority, rolling through. I'm told there, saw the sign there, there's traffic lights coming up on the bridge, no need to rush to the red. Yeah, if we come in here nice and slowly, giving it a chance, we don't really want to do a hill start here, if we can avoid it. But we're slowing in, if it changed at any point in there, we could be moving off, but there you go, we have to stop of course. Be prepared, red and amber gives you about two and a half seconds to get the car prepared, so maybe sit on the bike, set the gas now, and go. Could have gone second earlier there, being a bit picky. Moving away here. So this road catches a few people out. It is still 30 miles an hour, there's been no change of speed. It looks like a country lane. You could be going safer faster than 30. If you don't realize you're gonna speed up, there's the national speed limit. So it's national speed limit all the way. The world's shortest 60 mile an hour zone, national speed limit zone, cause it changes back. What was the point? <laughs> it goes back to uh, 30 miles an hour. So 30, 60, 200 yards, why? Don't know, we're turning left here. I 
Honestly, going on green, we're turning left. That's right, correct. Following the road through. So into the village. Again, in villages, drive with caution. Things could develop, things could come from the right. But it's not so bad today. Can be a little bit busy this, this village through here. It's the main route through to Wellingborough. through the village we go up to the roundabout second exit right so this is second exit right it's the kind of right angle and this is the main road through you've got to drive this with a little bit of confidence that car's coming a little bit faster it did slow down at the end now remember those cars will be giving way to us a lot of times there's lots of cars here students just don't have the confidence to nudge out to stop those cars we're rolling out good so recognise the difference between the mini roundabout and just a normal junction there. This is a bit fiddly, it's a bit narrow. Uh, the big vehicle, like an agricultural vehicle, comes around the corner. So just driving with caution. This is a great drive under test conditions. So here comes the national speed limit sign. Make sure you check your mirrors centre and right. It's OK to accelerate away. Not the best road in the road, a bit potholy. So we're following the road. You sort of see there's some road markers in the middle. Not the best kept road in the world. But there is an opportunity to put your foot down the bit, show you can make progress, always ensuring you can stop in the distance you can see ahead, allowing for any reasonable foreseeable hazards. So this is a good little test route. We've had a bit of dual carriage trains, a bit of towns, uh, a few villages see stuff looking at their vehicle on the right. Looks like it has a perception video, this one, doesn't it? Uh, now a bit of rural as well. So everything's been tested. Into the village, checking your rear view mirror at a change of speed. We've often missed that. So a little warning there of uh, a question type traffic. Now remember, treat this national speed limit as end of the speed limit, not speed it up to 60. Um, change the meaning of it, end of speed limit, so you don't rush. Um, you'll get a use of speed there if you do that. Following the road ahead, we can't be moving on. We've got a rather wide tractor here. Car's held back. Uh, there's no way no one's overtaking that thing today. So we just have to sit here at a good distance and wait for it to clear. So on test, this sort of gives a nice opportunity to uh, take stock, relax, have a chat with the examiner about what A levels you're doing, that sort of thing. Now the examiners will talk to you, they'll put the feeders out and say something along the lines of what would you be doing today on a Friday if you weren't uh, doing your driving test and you say oh, I'll be working or whatever it is and they'll have a chat about it. If you don't want to talk, they'll pick up on it. Some people just want to concentrate on the draft, some people prefer to relax if they can just talk to the um, examiner. If you want to throw in anything about the road, the drive you're having, what your thought print, then please do talk to them. I had a horrible feeling this was going to go all the way to the other side of town. But he's turned off. Think of tractors, though, if they hold you up. Don't do a dangerous overtake. What did that hold us up? About a minute? They're not going to go far generally. Just have to exercise some caution there. Uh, right, we're moving off then. Obstruction cleared. And through to the next village of Allingbury.
So if you've got your driver, here you go, 30 miles an hour coming in here. Again, just check your rear view mirror. Again, if you've got a test coming up, it's about 30 minutes, this test route, a bit longer time, you're throwing in and moving in, moving off, manoeuvre um, at some point. Imagine yourself driving this. Could you do this? I think you probably can. If, you're, if you can drive, you will pass your driving test. It's that simple. All you've got to fight is the nerves on the day and present your driving. The actual test is presenting your driving to how you do with your driving instructor. Car's just pulling out there, just held back. We're turning right here anyway, so we don't have to worry about that bicycle. There we go, onto the green at Allingbury, at the end of the road, turning right. We go still 30 miles an hour of course it's still in the village now how many pull-ins have we had so far i think it's been two so you get about three four or five depending so pull over left hand side where it's safe to do so so again it's pulled over here which is great um not on the drop curb the closer you can pull in uh, the sooner you can pull in, the easier the pull-off's going to be here. If, if you went to the next one, it's going to be a little bit awkward with that van there. It's going to make it harder for yourself. So just do what is ever easiest, what's going to make your drive easiest. Take the easy option. So you're moving off there. Again, another change of speed. End of 30. Coming through here. Check mirrors. Is it safe to accelerate? If so, put your foot down here. Stopping the distance, you can see. Make progress. See, I think he could have gone a little bit faster here, moving away. So driving down here. We're asked to turn right. The independent section stopped a while back, so he's on directions now from the examiner. So at the turn, taking the next right. Strangely, no warning. No triangle warning of a turning right that's quite sharp. Don't know why that is. So turn into that road. Yeah, I think the independent section finished when we did the second pullover. The sat nav came down. Opportunity to just take the sat nav down and turn it off. And say from now on, just follow the road ahead unless any road marking signs or my directions tell me otherwise. It's a very restricted country road and obviously not as wide as the one we just come down here so we just drive checker speed accordingly to it. I can't fault this drive so far. It's, well apart from the one silly little incident at the beginning, that was nerves. That's all it was, it's just that build of nerves at the beginning and unfortunately, you see this was a driving assessment this person would have passed. So I had a chat about the roundabout there, I go look, we, how did that happen? Overall, you can get a feel for someone's driving. So, um, you, the examiners, if they do in this situation, they know they've had to fail someone that otherwise would be a great driver on the road. It can be a little bit unfair. People say it's unfair, the driver test, and that's kind of what they're talking about. It's not an assessment. It is a test. Essentially, you go out, zero faults, and all you've got to do is keep it nice and clean. You can see how quickly cars come upon us there. So a nice speed down here. Quite a lot of um, overgrowth here. So the, the line of sight is not as a bit more restricted than it is in the winter. So looking ahead, coming into a village, you can see the houses, you know there's going to be a change of speed, and sure enough, there is the change of speed. So for every change of speed, just check the mirrors. Slow down into uh, Pychley. There's a tricky little junction in Pychley that catches quite a few people out, so it's a good one to practice. Now every test route, in your area as well, There'll be a couple of junctions that always catch people out. It's worth just practicing, get a bit of um, local knowledge. Because on the day, you're going to feel a bit nervous. Um, the tricky ones, practice them well. 
It's winding away through the village. So we've had three pullovers on the right hand, left hand side so far. And here's an opportunity. Pulling up at the left hand side on a hill here. So this is one, we've had one behind the car. Two was the student's choice. And this one is on a hill just to see your clutch control when moving off. A little bit awkwardness, you can see how cars just come around the corner very quickly there. So you've got to show caution. The good observations are absolutely vital. And again, another car's come around, just moved it off, just held it here, holding it on the clutch. Another check in the mirrors, and around we go. That was really nicely done. So we're going to go up to the junction, turning left, and then meet at sharp right. A little stag. This is very steep. You can see, look at the angle of the pavement there. bit notorious this junction in Pytchley, it catches a few people out. Now if you are turning out here, you have to clear the road and turning right. Um, so if you've got a vehicle coming from, see the van coming through there. If Charlie had pulled off, slowed down to turn right and that van had to slow down, that would have held up traffic, that would have been classed as a serious fault. So if you've got a little stagger junction like that, make sure you turn left, turn right, get off the road before anything on the right has caught up with you. So it's the last bit of the driving test, we've done four pullovers. They're normally evenly spaced out, so you can sort of tell where you are with your driving test of how many pulling in and moving offs you've done. Just working our way around. So this is the last five minutes of the driving test. Nasty tight little turn there. Nicely exercised, holding it back. Another change of speed. If you don't get these mirror checks, you're going to pick up mirror check errors all the time. Any metal work, check your mirrors. Is it safe to accelerate? Yes, it is. There could be something gone for an overtake there, and you just be accelerating off with it. So this road is a little bit wider. Nice opportunity to uh, show the exam that you can make progress where it's safe to do so. Always stopping the distance you can see ahead. So this is the uh, rural route, just going back to the test centre now, and uh, not too taxing, is it? We just keep on the, keeping your lanes and uh, make progress. Yeah, nice speed that. Golf club on the right there, just keep an eye out of any traffic coming in. Little curve there juts out, be careful of that. Rolling back, and we're going to go follow it to the end of the road. And at the roundabout, we're going to turn left. <clears throat> now we're running downhill to this roundabout, so therefore just hold your brake a little bit earlier. Maybe a little bit more brake just to slow us down. It's very easy when you're running down the hill just to run into a junction a little bit quickly. Change of speed, so you do need another mirror check coming into there. Rolling in nicely. And I think we're going to file that one as the test that got away. That was a brilliant drive. The, the student can clearly drive well, great, show great observations, adjusted their drive to the conditions. Unfortunately, a momentary lapse of concentration. I think when they went around that roundabout, they kind of looked to where they were going and just took the afterboard slightly clipped up on the curb. But for the driving test, that's classed as a serious fault. What do we do? When I saw this, it's like, get a test book, get back in, let's get that license sorted out. I have absolutely no issues with this with this person's driving, just the moment she lapsed, caused by nerves on the day. Um, because I went out with it, I can actually feel those nerves building at the beginning. And so do try and work on those nerves. I've got videos to help with that. Um, that's normally the, normally the reason why these... Anyway, that's the end of that. I can't film inside here, so we'll call it there a day. And uh, I hope that's helped.